Hey, what are you doing up in a tree? <laughs> hey, let me get you down here. We'll talk a minute. We'll have some fun together. Let's see if I can get you down from there. All right, now it's better. You're swinging, ain't you? All right. It's been a long time since I've seen y'all. I'm finally back out to where I can have just a little bit of fun out here in the woods with you. Show you some things. Now, last time we got together, I had camera problems. And uh, I think I've got the camera problems straightened out now. And uh, what I want to do is I want to show you a awesome shelter frame. Okay? And uh, it was invented, designed, created, whatever you want to call it, by my old mentor, Flathead Ed. Now, uh, I just call it the Flathead Frame Shelter. And um, it's very versatile. And there's several different ways that you can cover it and several different things that you can add to it. And uh, there's, it's, it's just an all-around excellent shelter. And uh, I'm going to show you step-by-step step how to build the frame. And then I'm going to show you one of the many very cool options for uh, setting it, I mean, for, um, what do you call it, for covering it, basically putting a cover on. So let's uh, find the place, and uh, I'll get this backpack off. And uh, what we got to do is we got to round up some wood, and I'll show you step-by-step step what all that you're going to need to do this. So y'all get ready to have some fun with Dave. <laughs> All right, I think I found a good spot. It's a little clearing right here in the middle. Now, um, okay, blank stare into the camera. <laughs> it's working! No more camera problems, okay? I had bad camera problems last time. All right, now, let's see. A um, little bit of word about this shelter right here now. This is a, uh, this is a pretty good shelter. It's a fantastic shelter frame. And... Um, I'm going to, hold on, let me hang this up. I'm going to, I'm going to take my backpack off and hang it up on this tree over here like I always do so that I won't, it won't be in the way of everything. But anyway, um, now this shelter frame, if you're going to have this as a long-term shelter, you'll want to, or like if you're going to stay for a good while or if you're going to set it up and you're going to leave it, then what you want to do is you want to um, cut it out of all green wood, okay? But I'm not going to do that. You can, you can make it out of, uh, you can make it out of old rotten wood, but dead wood laying around on the ground. And uh, I know that's, you know, that's a little bit more responsible if you're not going to, if it's not like a real survival situation, if it's just, if it's just a bushcraft situation or a camping situation. And that's normally what I mean. I don't get into survival situations because they are no fun whatsoever, no matter what TV says. <laughs> Love strapping my pack to a tree. Don't like setting stuff on the ground. Bugs get in it, insects get in it, you get it wet. I have back problems and I don't like uh, having to, I just, in general, I don't like having to put it on the ground. So I use bungee cords to strap it to a tree. Now, let's see here, we have, uh, where am I gonna put this? Oh, I'll put this up later. What I'm going to do is we're going to start out by going and getting um, going and getting the top piece that we're going to need. Okay. Now let me roll you down here. I'm going to show you one thing real quick that's very cool. <clears throat> I was going to make a video on it, a video of me making this part, but I didn't get a chance to. Anybody that's got a SE Hungalas, it's got a sheath that is mostly kydex okay now the what i did let's see if i can see what i'm doing here what i did let's see what i did is i wanted to add i wanted to add a pouch for a saw so that i could carry my silky saw still not getting it in the shot see right here okay and what i did what I did is you can see the back side of it here. It's a kydex sheath, okay? Can you see that? It's a kydex sheath. And when I made this pouch, what I did is I put this, this belt 
with the webbing, the webbing goes all the way around to the back side and all the way over the top side and goes all the way around here. And the paracord through these loops here is what actually holds it on, okay? So that way I have with me my machete and then I have a saw for taking care of my sawing chores. Okay, all right, now, enough of that. Let's, uh, <clears throat> let's walk over there Let's walk over there, and I'll show you how to get the top piece of our shelter. All right, now, I'm at the same spot that I was before, and I'd already sawed on the end of a log on my, my earlier video that didn't, didn't work. But uh, what you got to do is you got to saw you off a piece that is about, um, about a foot long, and as big a diameter as you can handle. Now, normally, like I say, you can... It's a lot of sawing if you want to do it out of green, but I'm just going to try to do it out of something that's uh, something that's um, that's um, dead and laying on the ground. And it's kind of rotten, but I'm just going to have to be careful with it to make it last. Uh, so let's let's ease you down here and take a look at it. There you are, uh, right there. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to saw off about a foot of this piece right here. Okay, somewhere about maybe right here. All right, now, right off the bat, that piece is too rotten. The whole end came off, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come up here, and I'm gonna try another piece. All right, now you're getting down into some pretty good wood. That's not quite as bad. Something that's just completely rotted like that's not as good. So let's go with this right here, okay? Now, the first thing I'm going to do, let's see. You take about halfway. Yeah, can you see this? Let me move you down a little bit. Dang, mosquitoes are terrible. You want to saw about, I'd say, the width of the blade all the way around, like this right here. Whoop, came unlocked. All right, and then you want to turn it over. Saw down the width of the blade. This will make more sense here in a minute when I get there. All right, all the way around. There you go. Saw it all the way around the width of the blade. Okay, now, you stand it up. Take your machete out. All right. And what you want to do is you want to chop well, hold on a minute. I gotta. Well, this will work. This is this will be a baton. You want to beat down? <laughs> That's an awful big baton. You want to beat down like that right there. You want to make sure and not crack the rest of it. All right. Let's see. Beat down right here. All right. And if it doesn't fall off, you want to saw it. All right. Chop this. Ah, uh, see, this has already fell apart. All right. This ain't good. Uh, I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna cut further down into the log, 
because this is just absolutely falling apart. But basically what you want to do is you want to trim it down. Rotten wood does not help. So what you want to do is I'm going to give this another try because all this wood here has got pieces coming apart. Like I say, it works better with green wood, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut on down in further until I can get a piece that's going to work. All right, several trees and several attempts later, which I just absolutely got sick of filming failures, I just finally went and I found another tree that wasn't bad at all, okay? And like I say, what you do is you take the piece that's about a foot long, okay? You'll saw down about halfway all the way around, and then you'll start batoning from the end, okay? All right? And it, sometimes it kind of helps to undercut a little bit, okay? Now, I'm kind of nervous, but... <laughs> I don't want to do nothing to this piece, but you can understand why green wood would be so much better. But there's no green wood, and I ain't cutting a whole tree down just to make this shelter for, for one night, okay? So anyway, now, this is normally what the top piece would look like, okay? Now, for the addition that I'm going to add, because there's several different ways of of covering the shelter, there's several different versions. You can have a, you can have a single tarp, a dual tarp, you can have it TP style, you can have it with a porch roof. There's several different ways, but there's a cool way that I like setting it up and I'm going to show you. So let me ease you down here a minute and I'll show you. I'll show you the addition. This is the part that you don't necessarily have to do, but I do it. Okay? Now, what you do is it's going to take, let's see, you get out the, get your saw out. If you got green wood, you might could chop this out. You might could chop this out with your, uh, with a machete, but I'm going to saw this. But what you want to do basically is, you want to saw a V into the top of it, okay? Just a small V. All right. And I'm gonna flip it over and I'll do the other side. did pretty good I'm gonna try to be careful with this but what you got is you got a V sawed into the top of it okay that'll be later on so that you can lay a branch right into it and it's gonna sit in there now I know all this is uh <laughs> I know all this just this, this thing looks really weird but after I get it all together it's gonna make sense and uh this is also going to be one of them kind of shelters that uh, Boy Scouts and kids just go insane over. They absolutely love it because it's such a fun shelter to set up. And the way the frame is is awesome. Now, I got this piece right here. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get the other elements of it. And which is, uh, it's between six and eight small poles. They're about six feet tall, head high. Okay. So... And I'm just going to look around, I'm going to gather them up, and I'll bring them back to camp to process them. Now, if you can look around right here, you can see all this wood laying around all over the ground. There's just, there's, there's dead wood laying all over the place. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down there, and I'm going to, I'm going to saw up some of that stuff for the, uh, for the shelter. As you can see right there, there's three parts to the shelter already. And with the folding saw, I mean, it just doesn't take any time at all. So I'm gonna saw all these up and uh, I'll carry them back to camp. And then I'll show you how you process the ends of them. 
and then we'll put it together. All right, now I have my pieces of wood, okay? And what you want to do is you want to get them that's about wrist, wrist thick or less, okay? And I'll show you how to prepare them. The bottom will be the thicker part, and the top will be the, the thinner part, okay? Somewhere in the neighborhood of wrist, I say wrist. <laughs> I'm southern, I can't pronounce. Wrist thick wood, okay, about about head high, okay? Now, what we want to do is uh, take the smaller end, okay? Got to put on the old lanyard. And generally, if there's any bark on these old dried pieces, you'll want to cut it off, which makes a good fire starter later on, okay? Now, what you want to do Sometimes it helps to have you a little flat spot on your chopping block for your wood to sit on. This is actually pretty good wood right here to have been laying on the ground. my machete up. Everything takes time. All right, now the end of it is what I've done. Not a sharp point, but just a flat on each side at an angle, okay? Now the next thing you want to do is you want to get your saw and you want to saw a V right in the middle of it, okay? And see with all this chopping and sawing, that's another reason why I say this is a, a fun project for scouts or for kids on a camping trip. All right, lay it down, put your foot over it. All right, cut it at an angle. Ah, flip it over. Right-handed. Let's see. And there you go. I have cut a V in it. See how it looks? All right. Now the other end of these things, you can sharpen them to a spear point so they'll stab in the ground, but that's not necessary with this setup that I'm doing today and I'll explain why. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna prepare the tops of all eight of these and take them over to the campsite and we'll be ready to set up the frame. You know, I sure do like to talk a lot on these videos, don't I? Yak, 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 yak. <laughs> That's why they're so long. <laughs> oh, man. All right. That's some good stuff. <laughs> got to stay hydrated. Um, now, I got all my wood over there piled up on the ground, okay? The next step is I'm going to lay the wood out on the ground in like a, uh, a star shape. So that I can lift it up and put it together. <clears throat> Whenever you hang a canteen on a tree like this, sometimes it's handy to use a, a marlin spike hitch with a little piece of wood. And see, that's a that's a pretty good way of hanging it right there, sticking a piece of piece of something in there. Okay. Now <clears throat> I'm gonna set this stuff up. And I'm going to lift it up, and I'm telling you this ahead of time, because I'm going to have, I'm gonna have the camera kind of far away while I'm putting it together, and I don't know if you'll hear me or not, but you'll get the basic idea when I start doing it. All right, as you can see, what I have done is uh, right in the center is the uh, ends that are chopped to an angle and have the V on them, and I have eight pieces of wood laid there that's about... You know, they're about head high, about six feet. It's generally what works with uh, my 9 by 11 tarp, okay? Now, I'm going to head that way. And what I do, <clears throat> there's eight pieces of wood. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take four pieces and lift them up and set them underneath this thing. And the V is going to set up under here, okay?
Alright. As you can see, the way I have it, I've got all the pieces tucked up under it, and what I'm going to do now is I got the four pieces, is I'm going to take the remaining pieces and lift them up and drag them up and shove them inside. Now I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you another view of it up close and explain something. All right, here's a close-up view of it. Okay, you can see how I've got all that down. Now, here's the thing. Okay, the bigger this is, okay, the bigger this top piece is, the bigger diameter it is, the more you can tuck all of these up under it. Okay. Now, if you want to sharpen the ends of these, the other end where the ground is. If this is green wood, you can hammer on this. You can beat and beat and beat, and it'll spread all these out into the ground. Okay? Let me show you something on this other side here. Look around. Let's see what you got right here. Right, that's a good view right there. Okay, now, if you don't have a lot of room, what you're going to do is the original four main pieces that I was telling you about, the four biggest pieces, they will go, the V will go up against this, this little diameter that's left, okay? They will sit up against it. And then if you don't have enough room on this diameter for the other Vs to sit, then what you're going to do is you're going to take that and you're going to shove it up inside it, okay? And they will rest right up against it, okay? Sometimes if you cut them right, you can put them all the way up in here. But I like to, I like to kind of shove them up inside there. And like I say, you can take this right here on the top, and you can just pound and pound and pound if this is green. And it will literally just, it'll spread all the legs out, and it'll push it into the ground. Okay? Makes sense now. <laughs> I know it didn't before. <laughs> All right, there's the last little bitty of, bit of a, a view of the shelter and how it is. I think it kind of makes more sense now, that weird-looking thing I made on the top. Now, one point I want to make is where I've uh, cut that little V out right there. Let me pull my glove off. Where I made that little V, I set it right in line with one of the openings, okay? Because you have several openings in there. Just wanted to kind of make that point, okay? Now, let's ease over here to where the backpack is. And I'm going to start taking some of the stuff off and I'll explain about it. Now, up on top of the pack over there, the top one is a nine this is a mate this is a you can use anything you want to do this okay to cover this type frame but i'm showing you and i've done several different setups for it and i've done them with fire without fire i've done it for the summertime i've done mosquito net i've done winter time but this is basically a good all-around shelter right here what i'm fixing to show you that will cover this frame now the other tarp is a nine by eleven okay and then inside it i have some bubble wrap like what you're you do packaging with okay and i'll unroll it now inside here i have on the outside i have a five by seven tarp okay smaller tarp okay nine by eleven five by seven inside here i have a camo movers blanket okay those are those things from harbor freight and i also have what's called a grabber blanket and that's one of those uh it's a, a reusable emergency space blanket and I'll unroll that here in a minute and show you real quick. Now, I have everything wrapped up 
with paracord, okay? Here and there, okay? I wrap it up, bungee cord it to my pack, and that way, when I take it off, I have, there's my paracord, okay? All right, so let's, uh, I'm gonna lay this out on the ground. I'm gonna roll this out and uh, show you what's inside it. Now I use bungee cords on the other one to attach it to the bottom of my Alice pack and the top one, I just use the straps that go around here and I just loosened them up and shoved it under it. It's work pulling it out, putting it on, putting it off, but it helps secure everything. So just these straps right here that I do it on. And then down on the bottom, I put these bungees around the frame. Them bungees, they can just be used for anything. <laughs> I love my bungees. <laughs> I'll see if this makes sense right here in case you're wondering how I do these. But what I do is I just use a regular old uh, bow like uh, you would use on your uh, your shoelaces for these tag ends, okay? Because what I have on here is I have two pieces of paracord, okay? And uh, what I do, as I just wrap the tag ends all around, okay? The tag ends that are hanging off, okay? I wrap them round and round and then I do a regular bow type knot. I think that's what you call it, the kind you use on shoes. And then right here at the top, I use a taut line hitch. That way that I can, I can pull it up tight, okay? That's what I do with each end. That way I got me some long tag lines that I can wrap around. You see the taut line hitch, you can just take it and just feed it in or feed it out. See right there, you can take it, pull it down, and it'll tighten up onto your thing here, okay? All right, now this is the nine by 11 tar, okay? I'm just gonna kind of unroll it here for a minute. If I went to the side, I won't need it because it's the outside cover, okay? And I got some just plain old cheap bubble wrap, okay? And I'll show you what I'm gonna do with it. It'll be the first thing I'm gonna do. I'm gonna lay it under the ground. It helps protect your expensive uh, space blanket and uh, it can be, keep the moisture from coming up out of the ground. And if you get bored, you can pop the bubble. <laughs> now for years and years and years, I got into the bad habit of whenever I was doing setups like this, I would take my paracord and as I undid my wrapped up bundles of tarps and blankets, I just throw the paracord on the ground. Well, then you wind up with a tangle of mess that makes you very angry. <laughs> At least it does me. <laughs> so what I got to do now is where whenever I'm using this, I just, I'll take my, uh, whatever I'm strapped to the tree with, and I'll, I'll just take my paracord, and I'll, just, I'll hang it all right here, okay? That way, as I'm needing paracord, okay, as I'm needing it, I will use it. I'll grab it off of here, and... It won't be tangled up because to me before the shelter's built this pack strapped to a tree is kind of like my base camp it's where i keep everything okay so let's unwrap this other one and i'll i'll kind of show you what's in it <laughs> all right hey while i got you hanging here this tree right here is where i got my compass hanging because i like to keep my compass separate from my pack so it doesn't get abused and that's the reason why it's got a red cord so i can see it when i'm looking for it but i want to show you something cool look at the sticker i put on it Ain't that neat? <laughs> All right, let's 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 get over here and unroll this. Let's see Now, I tried not to go too crazy with that because I wanted you to see how I've got that rolled up. I actually have it nice and neat there. I don't know. That's just the way I do things. <laughs> now, on top, I have a moving blanket, and I have done something new to it that I didn't do before that I absolutely want to show you. Now... I got this moving blanket. You can get these moving blankets. People are used to seeing those old blue ones. And those old blue ones, you know, they're, they'll are they work. But they came out with them in camo, which is awesome. And these camo blankets, I think they're around 8 or $9. And so much cheaper than a wool blanket for just 
wear and tear and abuse and abuse and they're actually kind of warm and the insulation inside these I've had a little bit of it fall out on some of the ends and I almost think it's like feathers of some kind I know these are made in China but I mean and it's actually a little heavy a little heavy compared to like a a, a wooby you know a poncho liner but these things are just they're great and they're cheap now what I used to do is when I get these they have a black edging on them okay now right here I used to put grommets on all of them grommet kits okay well what I decided to do with this one is I took webbing and I sewed about, about six inches long with a loop on the end of it which works great for several different situations especially this shelf you can see how the grommets were ripping out but with this you can put a ton of stitches in there okay one inch webbing that is just that is some awesome stuff right there and I've got them sewn like every I think every like I don't know maybe foot and a half I got them sewn all along okay let me put this over here you'll see more about that in a minute now on top of here I have the next part of it is I have a space blanket okay made by grabber industries this is incredible it's actually like a tarp and I was given one years ago and I've used it off and on during the winter time and I liked it so much I ordered two more I have three of them now this is another one it's probably gonna blind the camera but one side is the reflective mylar and this is actually if you'll ever order a grabber or if you look them up online it's like a four or five layer of type tar okay and they come with some little bitty grommets on the end and what I do is I add grommets okay now on this particular blanket for this setup I have paracord already tied on okay and this is the main reason I have several grommets along here and I keep the paracord tied on I just leave it okay and that was the main reason why I ordered more of these blankets because this one of course it's got the cool olive drab but you can order them orange orange too see orange would be great to carry this thing right here because that can be your visual signal device for if you get lost and then of course you've got your audio device if you carry a whistle like I do for if you get lost okay but anyway uh okay that's that on that grabber space blanket love it it's a fantastic piece of gear okay now down on the ground right there something that i'm going to use later is a five by seven tarp okay i tried to get away from the expensive tarps and i'm trying to get over towards i've tried to stick with the really cheap tarps that way it's you know more common man type stuff where anybody can do this okay so all right, I'm going to move the camera over towards the shelter, and we're going to go inside, and I'm going to start showing you step-by-step step how I set up the way I set it now, up. Now, first thing I'm going to do, and I may move this around a little bit, is I'm going to take both of these and just, and just lay them in the floor of the shelter. idea behind the bubble wrap idea behind the bubble wrap it's cheap it's lightweight it helps keep the moisture from coming up through the ground and it also protects from I cleared out a little bit it's mostly pine straw here uh, it'll protect your blanket your tarp your your space blanket or tarp or whatever you prefer to use it'll it'll protect it from getting too many holes in it and stuff like that okay now got that laid in there next part okay is the reflective part now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay it down and then start tying it up to the poles there okay and what I'll do is I've got a long piece of paracord for the center line that I'll tie to
All right, I got you on the center line right here. Now the center of the tarp is not going to be in in uh, on one of these stobs. So for the center line, what I do is I use a uh, I use a um, a longer piece of uh, cord because it's just in the center. Okay, that makes sense. All right, now the other end right here, what I'll do is I'll just tie it up right here. All right, you just want to hold it up off the air because you're giving yourself a little, a little back wall right here. Back of the shelter, kind of giving you a little bit of an overview of what I've done so far. The uh, bubble wraps on the bottom, and then I've got the tarp tied up along the back side. Okay, now <clears throat> as I walk around this thing, I walk around this way. As I walk around this way, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you that right where my finger is okay that's the back of the bed i'll be laying right over on the inside there the car the tarp cover is going to be covering the whole shelter so this back side here is going to be your gear storage area you probably won't be able to see it once i get the cover over it okay okay here's another view of the the front of it all right you can see i've got like a back wall right there walk around this way back up a little bit okay see I'll be laying flat right there and then I got my back wall like a heat reflector okay Whoops. let me back up here <laughs> I'm hitting the trees I'm using a steady cam so it won't be moving around everywhere and you can see where I had the uh, the grommets with the uh, paracord I've tied it up to the, the the top sides right there okay so you're kind of getting the idea. Now the next part of it is I'm going to take that moving blanket right over there and the webbing that I showed you, I'm going to lay the blanket on and put the webbing up, okay? Next up is the moving blanket, okay? And I got these, uh, these things on both sides, but I'm only going to need them on one side. get real in-depth into this over here I want to explain something about mule tape I've always been a rope and paracord guy but my friend Randy gave me some mule tape and I'd heard Morris Kohansky say that what was it he said it's something that he has become very fond of <laughs> and if Morris likes it it's got to work so all right now what mule tape is it is I got some I got some large hanks of it in here that I've been cutting it up and I've been experimenting with mule tape I'm, I think with the setup I'm not going to need these but I'm going to use some shorter pieces but mule tape is it's a like a polyester webbing okay and I have several hanks of it and I've been I've been using it I've been wrapping it up and I've been using it and some knots work on it some don't with paracord most knots work but with this stuff's kind of tricky but I like it it's very super strong stuff, and it's it's used for pulling cable and wire through conduit. But anyway, uh, the way I'm going to attach today, let's see, the way I'm going to attach, I, I put, I put I, those are 24 feet pieces. And what I do is I go ahead and cut it up, and I prepare it ahead of time, and I have several pieces wrapped up in here, several pieces two feet long, okay, mule tape. This is a, a container that's kind of neat that you can, that thing, that tool I use called a whole hog. You know, if you have to, what you can do is you can, as you're building a shelter, you can, you can carry your excess of stuff around your neck. Or if you're collecting dry tinder, you can carry it around your neck. It's just, but it's a container I keep the mule tape in. Let's see. Let me see if I can show you up close something about this mule tape. It's got the number. Mule tape. Okay. 1,250 pounds of tensile strength. Ain't that awesome? Mule tape. If you ever, if you ever got any electrician buddies, 
See if I can get you some mule tape, some really good stuff. <laughs> All right, enough fooling around. Let's get over I've laid here. the blanket on top of my space blanket, okay? A lot of people say, well, naturally, that reflective stuff, the reflective stuff on that uh, space blanket reflects the heat back to your body. And a lot of people think that that has to be touching your body. No, it does not. What it can be, if you're laying on it and by some chance you get hot and sweaty, it becomes very uncomfortable. But the thing about it is, is if you have a blanket on top of that, not only will that reflective blanket absorb your, I mean, reflect back your heat, but the blankets that you have on the reflective will absorb your heat. Make sense? So I found some people try to put their blankets underneath the reflective that they think that's got to be against their skin. It does not. In my experience, you don't want that touching your skin. You want your blanket on top of that because that'll absorb your heat. That'll reflect it. Okay. That seems to work the best for me. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drag the back sides up and I'm going to tie it off with the mule tape and then I'm going to fold this over neatly. What I'm doing is where I got that webbing sewed on, I'm just going to pick them up, okay, and then I'm going to wrap them around here. So what I do is I take my mule tape and I put it through my sewn loop, okay, and then I just put that on there and I'll pull it up like that. Maybe wrap it around a few times. Now nah, I'll wrap it around once. It doesn't take much of a knot to hold that up because all you're doing is you're making this back wall you're making this back wall kind of covered up too okay Let's see if i can pull you over here now my my head's in the way and <laughs> yeah right here all right I'm trying to undo this thing get me out another piece here so i got a i got a bunch of it rolled up inside this container seems to be pretty handy you could keep it in a bag if you wanted to all right, let's see if I can get you over here. Do that. There you go. All right. See, the mule take these short pieces, and I don't like cutting up my cordage while I'm at camp, so I will prepare it ahead of time. All right, throw the mule tape in. This stuff is just very cool. It's, I mean, it's, to me, it's, uh, it's honestly, it's in between rope and, and paracord. You just have to use it to get used to it and see how you like it. I mean, I just think it's some incredible stuff. Ah, I really love that stuff, okay? I'm gonna tie all these up and then I cut Cause you. Cause I've got the back you. sides all tied up so that I have like a back wall there and a blanket laying down, okay? So you'll know the steps that all I have done now. You can kind of see the back wall there, how I've kind of got it curved around a little bit. It's starting to rain, so i got to hurry up. i got bubble wrap, my space blanket, my moving blanket, and my back wall. And it's long enough that I've got it folded over that I can cover up with it if I have to. Going to be the doorway right here where I'll be going in. Ah. Lay down just like this. Uh, I'll give you kind of a front view of it here. Actually, I think that top should have been down just a little bit lower so it spread it out more. You could even pull this over if you wanted to. All right, now the next part of it is gonna be take your uh, tarp, your uh, nine by 11, and throw it on the back side and just drag it over the top. Now that little flat piece right there 
it's going to have the tarp hanging over the top of it almost like a sweatshirt hood okay and you want the 11 foot part to be long ways and come over and wrap around okay makes sense clear as mud Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to I'm going to tie off that tarp to one leg, okay? And then I'll stretch it out the back. I'll show you how the back is. And you can see how I have a little bit coming over the front, okay? Now, this is where the long pieces of paracord are going to come in that I had on my pack. Because what I'll do is I'll tie off at the bottom and then just wrap my way around up the leg. Got the bottom down here tied off and then we'll pick the next grommet up here and I'll feed through it and feed around okay I needed more grommets on this I needed to add one up here but these two will be okay for now Now, if I was going to do a different setup, I would pull this down. If I was going to do the type of setup where just on the front of the shelter, I used my 5x7 as a door that would fold over, I would pull that down. But I'm actually leaving that part up. I'm going to leave that up, and then I'm going to tie this off right here. Just like this. And the way I do this... Run this through here. Let me move you over a little. I think you can see. There you go. Pull this over. Tie that off. You can kind of get the idea, or you will hear in a minute, of what I was talking about, about this thing being kind of like a hood, like a hooded sweatshirt. Because when you tie these off right here, like this, this part's standing up. Alright, let me move you back a little bit. Now, there you go. It's got kind of a hoodie look to it, like a sweatshirt. It's tied off to that leg, tied to that leg, tied to that leg. Now, you remember I said that that V was going to be where the opening is? Okay. No problem. I'll show you what that means in a minute. And like I say, you'll pull that down and tie it off if you're going to take that other tarp and just make you a door that'll open and close. Okay, but I got a different idea behind that. Now, let's go around behind the shelter and I'll show you something. The idea behind using such a gigantic tarp is if you use a small enough tarp just to cover your area then the ground around you could get rained on and get wet. Now, when you have this much tarp coming out this far away from your shelter, you're actually keeping the rain away from the ground around your shelter. So if the rain is gonna hit right out here, it's got about, you're gonna have about two to three feet behind you that's dry. 
And also inside there is going to be where I'm telling you about how it's going to be your 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 um, your gear storage. Now I got me some stakes, eye stakes. And what I'm going to do with them is I'm just going to. You don't tie off the back of the tarp anywhere. You just run along stabbing these in the ground and you're good to go. That's all there is to it, to the the back side of the tarp. You just stake it down and that's it. You're good to go, okay? So, I got the inside bed done. I don't have enough light to show you the inside, but you get the basic idea because I laid in it a few times. So, now what I'm going to do is I got to gather up some pieces. These pieces were what I call about head high. Risk, th risk, wrist <laughs> thick. Having trouble with my southern again. <laughs> now the next piece is what you need is you need three pieces that are thumb thick or thicker. You know, not real, real thick. And they need to be about seven feet long. Okay? And you'll understand why in a minute. And I'll show you what to do with them. I'm going to go gather them up. Kind of get the idea of what I was talking about, about it being uh, kind of like a, like a hood, like a hoodie sweatshirt. If that tarp was brown, it would kind of remind you of something from Star Wars. <laughs> some, some kind of creature or something. All right, now, I've gathered up my sticks, okay? They are, well, these ain't quite, well, I don't know. Yeah, these, might, these are close to seven feet tall, okay? Now, the smallest piece here, I'm just going to leave here. There's two other pieces. I'm going to show you how I'm going to prepare them if it works right. If it don't, I'm just going to have to tie them together with paracord. So, all right, let's go over here to. I got a tree over here I can use. Let's go over here and we'll take a look at uh, how I'm going to do it. a tree hanging down right here. First thing you want to do, get out the old machete. Look at that. It's screwing me up. I, I, I love to do my fancy work where I do that. All right, now. Give us kind of a flat spot to work on. It's just a down tree. It ain't going to hurt anything. Now, you got a bigger end and you got a smaller end. Okay, the big end, what you want to do is you want to chop it into a spear point. All right, spear point it is. Look good? All right. The other thing you want to do is you want to cut a flat. Let's see. You want to cut, hold on a minute. I'm going to cut a flat end on it. This end here is actually broke. All right, you want a flat end right there. I'll lay out on the ground because I'm going to need it here in a minute. And what you want to do next is you want to cut a flat. Turn it that way. Alright. Good job. Now, uh, this, this flat that I've cut on here is not to be confused with what I did on the other one because this doesn't come to a sharp point. You've actually got a flat on it, okay? Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to saw two lines into this, and I'll get you over here close to where you can see what I'm doing, okay? It's kind of a, kind of a tricky operation. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. It's, uh, it's better if you use green wood, but this wood's not too rotten it's just dry so i'll give this a shot we'll see what happens you got your flat here okay what you want to do is you want to cut a square Let's see if i can do this there you go kind of tricky to get it started 
All right, now once you got these two cut into it, see the two lines I've got cut in? You want to try to squeeze in a couple more so that it'll be easy to get it out. Okay? And then you just start cutting at different angles. And the center will just eventually fall out. Okay? And something else you can do, let's see, where's it at? Okay. Something else you can do is if you got your mora with you, you can just take and, you're gonna need it anyway, and you're gonna be carving some of this stuff out inside here. All right, and that's what you're gonna do. The end of it will be like that, okay? You got your flat, and then you got your cutout, okay? And then right here, you got your other end pointy. Now I'm gonna prepare the other one that way, and then I'm gonna prepare the other one that way, and then once I get it prepared, I'm going to, uh, I'll show you. There's one thing that I forgot that I do have to do to that piece over there. I gotta go over there and get it. And that's what I'll show you after I finish preparing this one. All right, this next part is a doozy. What you want to do, one end of the stick, the smaller end, you just want to leave it alone. The bigger end, the reason you want to use the bigger end is because you got a little bit more meat to work with. But what you want to do is you want to try to chop a square. Let me move that. You want to try to chop a square into the end of it. Some people will have to use their mora because you have a lot more finesse with your mora than you do a big blade. Because sometimes with a big blade, you cut off a lot more than you, you want to cut off. There you go. Alright, now what you want to do, see how that looks? You want to make that to where it'll fit in to there. Okay. Make that neat. Alright. That's how it's going to fit in, just like that. Okay. Now, once you've got that in done, you want to come about halfway, okay, and you want to cut it smaller. Now this, I'm not going to use the machete on this. I'm going to use the mower on this and get it off. Right here out on the end, you're going to cut this down smaller. Whoops, starting to rain. That's what I wanted to see. Now on the very end, once you got that cut down, once you got a taper on it, you want to cut them corners off so that it's like octagon shape. It doesn't make sense when you look at it, but when you say it, when you show it, it'll make a little more sense. Now, I may have cut that, I may have cut that off a little bit too much, but that's going to be to where your other side is going to fit in and be able to turn a little, okay? About like that. And I may have to trim it up once I get it on the shelter. Now, what okay. you do is you remember that V that I cut inside it? Okay, what you do with that is you take the other end of this and you slide it up inside there. All right, can you see that? I think you can. And then you take this end
and you stab that end into the ground, I'm hoping, let me prop that up right there. I gotta hurry up because it's fixing the rain. Let me lift you up a little bit right here. Okay, now I think you can see better. Now what you do is you take this end and you want these kind of spread out because you don't want the tarp at, at, at too much of an angle. You want it spread out at like more of a roof. And so what you're gonna do now, take him more, and you're gonna eyeball this one, and you're gonna start you're gonna start cutting the angle on it because you've got that flat fit in this part. You get the idea of it? I think I'm gonna bring you in closer for this. You kind of get the idea of that now, of what I'm doing for the roof. And let me bring you in just a little bit closer here. Because that's like I say, it's fixing to rain. And old Dave don't have a waterproof camera. <laughs> <laughs> all right take that and then what you're going to do can you see me yeah you can see me good all right what you want to do now is you're going to start cutting on this at an angle There comes the rain. All right. And then you want to shove this piece on up in there. All right, I haven't quite cut enough. Have to put a little more. Oh, I got me a little umbrella over the camera right here. So I don't get it wet. If I get, if I get wet, I don't really care. I'm not getting my camera wet. Let's cut a little bit more off. They just ain't much of a way of doing this down on the ground. All right, put this up. I think that'll work. And see, this is the reason for having the sharp point stabbed down into the ground. Right there. And then you slide that bad boy in. And there you have it. Okay. And the further you push, the tighter it gets, and once you once you put the uh, once you put the tarp on it, tie off the legs, it'll really hold everything together. Let me get you in here, kind of close. Call it and run it out of time. Get you on macro. Oh yeah, there you are. See how it is. All right, now I'm gonna back you up and I'm gonna throw the tarp over and I'm gonna tie it off. I gotta get going so I can get this done so I can get everything in the shelter. Now you wanna put the seven foot part this a ways, I think. Well, actually you just gotta try it and see what works. This was the other tarp. This was a five by seven that I had the, uh, the grabber blanket and the moving blanket. I'm gonna tie off the ends to the legs with a couple of pieces of this stuff. The two foot, I'll tie it off and I'll move you around. See, now what I do is I'll go over and get my, my backpack to where I had the longer pieces of the uh, mule tape. And what I'll do is I'll take the, uh, the back side, I'll take the back side and I'll stretch it out. Wrong way. I'll stretch it out real tight, okay? And that way I got me a neat little roof over it. So 
let's take care of that. And there's another view. Now what I'm going to do is the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that top part and I'm going to stretch it out. I'm trying to keep the rain off the camera. It's always something, ain't it? Now, I'm going to take um, my, um, my um, 24 feet of mule tape. And I've got it wrapped up just like I do my paracord where I can just pull out what I need. Alright, that's good enough. That's good enough right there. You kind of get the basic idea of it. Now what I'm going to do is I think before the rain picks up real bad, I'm going to take a steady cam and I'm going to walk around it. Let me run you over here for a minute. Oh, because I'm going to have to get inside. Let's see. Kind of get a view now of the inside. Alright, now just for a little bit of clarification here. You can see how I've got the pieces stabbed in the ground with the tarp tied to it. And then I've got this uh, line tied up to this tree. Now what I'll do is I'll tie two more down here, from here, and I'll go down to the ground. Okay. And I'm just trying to get all this done because i got to get all my gear in here before, before it starts raining. Let's try to adjust this. So you can have a fire right out here in the front if you want to. And you could stretch a fire shield from point to point if you want to reflect the heat back into your shelter. Very cool shelter for if you need long term. You got your porch roof out there. You got your sleeping area inside. And then you got your gear storage in the back. Like I say, I'll tie off right there and I'll tie it down. Ain't that neat? All right. Get you where I can see you. <laughs> All right, for those of you that uh, like the long videos, you're really going to love this one. <laughs> and I've had tons of fun. I uh, hope you learned something. Hope you had fun. Hope you like the shelter. If you got a kid or scouts, get out and try it. Uh, it's a fantastic shelter. It's really cool. If you're going to do the long term type bug out thing, everything here you need is pretty cheap, pretty readily available. And not too heavy. Everything I needed for this is under 10 pounds. And for what you're getting out of it, it's excellent. And like I say, if it's long term, do it out of Greenwood. So I hope you had fun starting to rain. I got to get inside. <laughs> and I will see you in the next one. <laughs>